What's going on guys? Zach from Mini Quad Bros here. I'm going to do a quick overview of the Naze32 and Clean Flight software, just kind of what every little setting does. Um, it's been a while since I've done something like this. My last video covers base flight only. Um, so I've got my Naze32 sitting here and I'm just going to plug it into my computer. You're going to need a driver to do this. Just Google Naze32 driver and download the correct, uh, the correct driver for whatever soft, uh, Windows software or Mac software you're running. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. And the first thing we need to do after plugging it in is flash the firmware. Um, so I've got Clean Flight pulled up here, um, and we're going to go up here to the top left, and we're going to uh, choose the latest stable version, um, and then click Load Online Firmware right here, and scroll down and hit Flash Firmware. And right here, you're going to see all the dialogue of the flashing. So it's flashing, and once this is complete, we'll be able to connect verifying now and it's successful. Um, if you have issues with that, um, there's ways to short your bootloader if you accidentally flashed it with like CC3, CC3D firmware or another uh, hardware uh, software, um, then you can, you can short the bootloaders and actually get everything back on track. So let's go up here and hit connect. And as you can see, we're in now. If I move the, move the nays around, um, the, the diagram corresponds. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to do is calibrate your accelerometer. Um, so get your quad or just your base NACE32 on a flat surface, as flat as possible. It doesn't have to be perfect because you can always trim this later with uh, NACE32 stick commands during flying. Um, so go ahead and calibrate that. Just takes one second and that's complete. Um, even if you don't plan to use auto leveling, you should calibrate your accelerometer because if it senses it's off too much, it will not arm. Um, so a lot of people who fly, you know, acro only, they just don't even bother calibrating it and they can run into some issues later on with that. So just calibrate it. Um, ignore the ports. Jump right into configuration. Um, so I'm just going to kind of go over everything as best I know. I don't know every little single thing in here. So just bear with me. Um, a couple of things that I do is I definitely enable motor stop and one shot one two five. Uh, only enable this if your ESC support it. Um, and I bump this up to like eight. Um, this setting right here just it disarms the motors after like say you arm it and get distracted and your buddy's talking to you, it'll automatically disarm after a set amount of time. And you can um, you can. Uh, <clears throat> disable this completely if you want. Um, I just bump it up to 8 because sometimes I do forget it's armed. Uh, minimum throttle, I keep this at 1050. Uh, middle throttle, 1500. I think with certain radios um, you need to change this. Maybe Futaba, I'm not really sure. I only use the Tyrannus these days. But I think for Tyrannus and Spectrum it's 1500 center. Uh, maximum throttle, I uh, usually bump this up to 2000 actually. So I'm going to do that. And after each setting you input, um, don't just change the tab because you need to save it at the bottom here. So I'll be doing all these and then I'll just do one big save at the end. Um, let's go. Accelerometer trim. So this is little minor adjustments in your accelerometer. So if you take your quad for a maiden and it's drifting forward a little bit, um, you can actually go here and type in minus two or something like that. And it'll trim it two degrees back and then hopefully your quad will fly a little more, you know, it won't drift as much. And there's also stick commands, you can do this, uh, like say you want to you take your quad for a maiden, and you fly it and it's drifting, well you can land it, do a little stick command with your radio, and actually trim it that way while you're at the field, which is nice. So that's what I usually do. So I'm going to leave these uh, like that for now. Um, going over to the left here, so this is board alignment. This is how your Naze32 is mounted in your quad. So you can actually, you don't have to mount it with the arrow on the Naze32 pointing forward. You can mount it upside down, sideways, it doesn't matter. It all can be corrected right here. So if you, what I typically do is I rotate my Naze 90 degrees so that the USB port sticks out the side so it's easily accessible. Um, so I usually punch in here um, either 90 or negative 90. And on the, uh, oops, sorry, that's pitch. I do that on the yaw. And then that'll make it so that it knows it's it's rotated 90 degrees on its yaw axis. And it'll correct for that. 
Um, so right here, this is receiver mode. This is whatever protocol your receiver runs. So with the Tyrannus and D4R receiver, the most common setup in the world probably, it's a P RX PPM setup. Um, with a Spectrum, um, a Spectrum uh, radio or uh, other PWM uh, radio protocols, it's, it's right here, I believe. RX parallel PWM. That's just standard P PWM, one wire for one channel. Whereas PPM up here is one wire for eight channels or so on. Um, so make sure you do that correctly. I'm gonna leave it on here since I use the Tyrannus. Um, going over to the right here, we have battery voltage. So this is only uh, relevant if you've hooked up your power distribution board um, to your VBAT, VBAT pins on your NAS32. This does not power the NAS, this is actually what just for bat battery voltage monitoring. So um, typically you'll see people running JST or servo cables up to the VBAT pins from their power distribution board. Um, and all this is doing is taking in your, um, your battery voltage, just the overall voltage and dividing it into different cells. So um, I usually leave these two the same. And warning cell voltage is 3.5, that's good. And then this is what you have to kind of calibrate. Um, 110 and to 112 is usually where it's at, um, but basically you'll plug in your battery um, with uh, knowing the voltage of it, the exact voltage, so use a multimeter or a battery cell checker or something like that to get the complete voltage accurately. And then you're gonna mess with this number either up or down till it reflects on this setup page over here, right here, accurately. So right now it says zero volts because this is just a NAS32, it's not hooked up to anything. But when you actually have everything hooked up to your PDB and this stuff is configured correctly, um, your NAS32 will know the voltage of your pack. Um, and that's that's nice for OSDs and for you can actually have it um, have some telemetry with your uh, Tyrannus radio. So that's pretty cool. Um, current sensor, I've never messed with that, so I'm not going to go into it. I've never done RSSI. I know it's really easy, I'm just lazy. Um, failsafe, I, with the D4R in particular, your failsafe is accepted through whatever your D4R failsafe is, so I always set it to zero throttle. But with some other set of, with some other radios like um, turning G9X and stuff, uh, this is actually taken into account. So you wanna set up your failsafe here, and this is actually a pretty good value. You can even go lower if you want. So to test this, basically take your props off your motors and Throt, arm your quad and throttle up and turn off your radio and if your all your motors don't stop within a few seconds um, then you need to figure out how to set that up correctly because your quad will fly away and that's not going to be very fun um, but like I said with the D4R and other receivers who have built in fail safes you need to set it through the receiver and this just to be safe GPS I'm not going into um, down here these are all the extra features that you used to have to put into the CLI, but now they're here for a checkbox. Um, I've never done an in-flight acceleration calibration, accelerator, <laughs> accelerometer calibration. I've never done that. I don't mess with servo tilt. Um, I haven't done any soft serial in a while. You do this for like GPS and stuff, I believe. Um, sonar, I don't do. Telemetry, I always enable because I have my telemetry output into my OSD, so I need that outputting. I don't know what 3D mode is. Oh, it looks like it's for reversible ESCs for flying upside down and such, that's cool. I do enable this because I do sometimes occasionally set up an LED bar in the back. Um, you don't have to though. If you're not doing it, just leave it unchecked. Um, this is for like a uh, little LCD display or whatever, I think, kind of like the KK2. I'm not gonna get into that. And black box, you can look that up. I'm not going to get into that. So basically, after you have everything set here, just make sure you hit save. And it's going to save at the top here. Um, let's go over to PID tuning. Um, I'm a big fan, right off the bat, I'm a big fan of PID controller 1, which is already set on. Um, this is the multi Wii rewrite. The old one is uh, 0, I believe. Yeah, that's the base flight one. Multi Wii old is the standard base flight PID controller. And then a lot of people really like uh, number two, Lux Float. Oh, sorry, that beeped really loud. Uh, Lux Float number two. Um, so for the sake of this, I'm just going to tell you the stock PIDs with PID Controller 1 are pretty damn good for a lot of setups. Um, 
I'm pretty lazy and I just like to fly. So sometimes I end up just flying on stock pit setups. I don't even set up my pids and it's, it's good enough for me. Um, a couple things I do like to do is, <laughs> is save this here. And then, um, we need to mess with our rates. So for me, I like high rates. So I'm going to put in 0.40 for roll and pitch. And then for yaw, I'm going to do 0.45 TPA and TPA breakpoint. Leave those alone for this pit controller. <clears throat> um, so I'm not going to go into how to tune pins, obviously, with this, but that's good enough for now. So just click save. We're going to go over to receiver tab and finish up your radio setup. So um, this, if you plug in your quad um, and your NAS32 at the same time, so you're everything has battery power and it's plugged into your clean flight here, you can actually see your radio stick commands. Um, these will all start moving with your radio if you have it turned on, um, but your quad needs to have battery power. Um, so you can kind of get a feel for if everything's going to be right or wrong. So you can take the roll stick and roll a little bit to the right and if it doesn't move, then something's wrong and typically it's because you have PPM enabled when you're using a PWM setup or vice versa. Um, now if you're hitting your roll stick and yaws moving and all the channels are mixed up and on the wrong sticks then you need to go to channel map right here and you need to figure out which one of these you're on for you know spectrum and uh, the Tyrannus I think the default should be T-A-E-R-1234 and for Futaba and some other radios it's A-E-T-R um, so get that done correctly and then if you're a beginner flyer leave the rates alone if you're looking to increase your rates you can use mine I use 1.3 on the RC rate and then I drop my exo expo to 0 0.60 and then this is a new one I don't think I've ever messed with that so I leave that alone. It's probably why my yaw is nice and touchy. And then click save. Um, going over to the modes, this is where you can enable uh, different um, flight modes. So you can enable angle mode, horizon mode, and then acro mode. So again, have your radio on and your quad plugged in so the receiver has power. And you can flip switches and change these around to aux one and aux two. That'll be your two, your numbers, uh, let's see, five and six on your radio it'll correspond to those two channels and you can flip these switches around and get different um, different uh, throws for these modes so you can actually set up different um, different flight modes angle horizon and then um, some people don't know this but for acro mode it's just whenever um, when it's not in one of these two modes it's an acro mode so if it's red it's it's an acro mode um, and you can also set up an arm switch. So if you want your quad to only be able to arm with a switch, so you flip your switch and it's armed, then you do this. I prefer just to have the stick command of yawing all the way to the bottom right. Um, and then beeper is a good one to set up. You can set up a switch for your beeper. Um, so if it gets lost in tall grass, you can flip that switch and kind of hunt it down via the beeper sound. I'm not going to go into this, but you can tune and do all kinds of all kinds of stuff with this. Um, servos is irrelevant. GPS irrelevant. Um, I went over uh, calibrating the ESCs in my other video. Since I can't really do it now, I'll just kind of explain it quickly. So you start out with your quad unpowered, props off, um, and check this box. All the way on the master throttle there. Now. Make sure your props are off, plug your quad back in, your ESCs are going to make a little uh, beeping sound, and then after their little beeping sound, click at the bottom here, so it automatically goes to zero, and then they're going to do another confirmation beeping sound, saying that, hey, we've been calibrated, and then you're done, you can save, unplug your quad, and replug it, and now your ESCs are calibrated. Um, very important to do this. And I do just want to make a note real quick. Um, just because some of your motors start a little bit earlier with your radio does not mean your ESCs aren't calibrated. That's taking in for account the uh, accelerometer. Um, so if your quad's slightly, you won't even notice it, you'll think it's flat, but it's slightly off to the right and your two right motors spin up first, that doesn't mean your, your quads, um, um, you know, your ESCs aren't calibrated. That just means it knows it's off a little bit and it's trying to correct for that. Now, if you come in here and use this master throttle right here, 
and one of your motors starts a couple hundred uh, signals of, below your other motors, then that's a problem. The, when you use this command, they should all start pretty much within 10, 10 units of each other, um, or on the exact same unit, ideally. Um, so yeah, so you're good there. LED strip, this is really cool. You can, you can get into this on your own. Sensors, um, this is basically monitoring vibration. So if I take my nays and I bounce it around on my desk, you can see all the different axes. This is going crazy there. Um, you can really figure out which mode is vibrating when you do that. And then CLI command, that's the last thing I'm gonna go over real quick. Um, the only thing you really need to do in CLI anymore, you still have to do a lot through this, is set your loop time. So if you're running one shot capable ESCs, you need to set your loop time anywhere from, I don't know, I would say just set it at 1600. So set loop time equal to 26 or 1600. And then it's gonna say at the top left up here that it set the loop time, so just type save. And then it's going to say saving and rebooting. And then you can click over to one of these tabs. Takes a second. And then at the bottom here, you see cycle time. That's actually your loop time. So if it's at 1600, then it's saved, and that's good. Um, so yeah, this was just a kind of quick video that I just kind of felt like doing to go over all these different settings in the NAS32. Um, hopefully, I'll put out something a little more in-depth pretty soon with all the updates to my kits. Um, so you guys can have a better understanding of how to how to get everything set up so thank you guys for watching um, you can subscribe if you like this and bye